In Stingray, you can create physically based shaders or PBS which respect the laws of physics and energy conservation. This results in materials which accurately depict how light interacts with surfaces. Furthermore, you can set up logic systems in Flow to control the runtime properties of your PBS shaders such as the color or emissive channels. In this series, we'll design a custom PBS shader to blend between texture maps, creating our character servo's armor shedding effect. Go to File Project Manager. Create a new project using the empty template. Rename it Servo Blend Shader and store it in a local folder. Stingray restarts and compiles your new project with the included assets. Open your project folder from the Asset Browser. Copy the content and script folders from the files provided with this movie into your local folder. When this is done, go to Edit, Level Testing, Refresh to recompile your project with the newly copied assets. Open the level Servo Blend Shader. You can access Servo's material through the Property Editor. Click the Go to Resource icon next to Servo Mat. Start by loading each material map property with its corresponding texture map. Note that you can also do this by dragging textures from the Asset Browser to the Property Editor. Save your material. Then, adjust the Emissive Intensity property to illuminate Servo's LEDs. To further edit this material, we need to break its dependency link with its parent standard material. Click the Make Unique button. Next, double-click Servo Mat to open it in the Shader Graph Editor. Dock the Shader Graph Editor between the Level Viewport and the Property Editor. The Shader Graph Editor displays the underlying shader network that makes up your material output. Note that this shader graph mirrors the Stingray PBS shader graph in Maya, Maya LT, and 3ds Max. This ensures predictable results when updating the PBS shader in any of these applications. Let's focus on the shader graph's color channel. The Color Map Switch node controls the output sent to the base color channel of the standard base node. If the Use Color Map node's value is 1, meaning the property is turned on, then Stingray uses the Color Map node which refers to the color texture. Otherwise, it uses the Base Color node corresponding to a color swatch. Let's add a new texture option to this color channel. Right-click in the graph and create a Sample Texture node. In the Property Editor, Set both its node name and display name properties to alternate color map. The display name property differs from the node name property in that it represents the node's label as an exposed material property. The UI order property refers to its placement order among the material properties. Set it to 7 to reorder it with the other texture maps. Connect the alternate color map node to the color map switch node's false input replacing the current connection. Stingray highlights the node to alert you of a problem preventing it from compiling the material. Here, the node is missing the necessary UV information to project the texture onto servo. Connect it to the TextCord0 node to feed it the proper UV coordinates. Now, load a texture into the new material property. Here, we'll use the Servo AO texture to contrast Servo's current armor. Toggle the Use Color Map Property checkbox to validate your shader graph. While this works well, the blend shader we're building requires a smooth transition between textures, so we'll replace the Color Map Switch node with the Linear Interpolate node. Rename it to Color Map Blend. Connect the color map and alternate color map nodes to the A and B ports respectively. The node's weight port controls the interpolation or blend between A and B. For this, we'll use a material variable node. 
set both its node name and display name properties to blend weight. Next, set its type property to scalar to declare this node as numeric instead of a vector. Notice that you can tell a node's output data type from its connection color. Also, set its UI order property to 8 to display it below the alternate color map property. Finally, connect the color map blend node to the standard base node. You can also delete the unused nodes. Save your shader graph to recompile it, then use the blend weight slider to validate your changes. In the next movie, we'll further customize this shader graph to achieve the desired animated blend effect.